What's going on, you guys? It is the Talking Sasquatch, and it's great to have you back. Now, I've needed to up my game for a long time and actually start off my own home server. Honestly, I haven't even been backing up my data properly. Yeah, I do have it backed up on cloud storage, but it'd be super nice to have something that was local, fast, and easy. And yeah, I've got full-size towers all over the place. I've got a ton of them kicking around, including one behind me, but they're large and impractical. They're big, they're bulky, they use way too much power. So I wanted something a little bit simpler. I've also wanted to set up things like Pi Hole, and even though I have a Raspberry Pi right here, I've just been too busy or too lazy to get around to it. Then I saw that Network Chuck did a video on a really cool looking single board server that's also hackable and I figured that's right up my alley. That single board server was the Zima board. The Zima board is a super small, super capable at home server that you can do so many cool things with. It's got plenty of IO, it just sips energy, it's super energy efficient, it's even got PCIe. This thing is really cool. I've actually been having a blast figuring out how to set it up and figuring out all the really cool stuff you can do with it. All right, buckle up. It's server time. Let's go. So I got the Zima board 832 and this little guy did not disappoint. It's actually running an Intel Celeron quad core processor, which means you can install pretty much anything onto it. Hell, you could even be an absolute mad lad and install Windows 11 onto it if you're feeling spicy. Stupid man, it's universally stupid. So let's switch over to the top down camera and take a closer look at it. So here we are in all of its glory. It is the Zima board and you can see it's got kind of an acrylic rear to it. Super nice looking. So this is a, got a 500 series Intel HD graphics support, which means that it can handle video transcoding up to 1080p straight out of the box. And it's got a mini DisplayPoint 1.2 that's capable of 4K60 output, which is really cool. Now this guy's got eight gigs of RAM, but it does also come with a two gig and a six gig version, but they all have 32 gigs of onboard memory, so you don't even need to plug a hard drive into it in order to use it. As far as connectivity goes, it's got dual gigabit ethernet ports, dual USB 3.0 ports, we've got two six gig SATA ports, including power, and this a full PCIe port right on the side. That's right, you can make the server do virtually anything you want by plugging in expansion boards through PCIe. Hell, you could even plug in a GPU if you really wanna get the most out of your Plex or Jellyfin transcoding. Now, if you're gonna plug something that power hungry in, you'll definitely want an external power source, but the server's got enough power to run a couple of hard drives, no problem. Currently, I'm using it as a NAS or a network attached storage, and I've just got one 10 gig hard disk drive hooked up to it. Now, this is a Toshiba N300 NAS specific hard drive. If you're going to be running this as a NAS, you wanna make sure that you're using a NAS intended hard drive since it's gonna be running for 24 seven. This bad boy is rated for 1.2 million hours of data transfer at a rate of 180 terabytes per year. That's a lot of data. They were even nice enough to send me this guy. Now this is actually a PCIe to dual M.2 NVMe drive. So I can actually run this with two NVMe drives. Very, very cool. All right, so that's enough specs. Let me fire it up and show you one of my favorite things about the Zima board. Okay, now that we're back up and running, we can fire up our browser and take a look at its native operating system, Casa OS. Now, I love Casa OS. It's so easy and it's an absolutely fantastic beginner level operating system. It's also got me learning a lot more about Docker. That's right, all of these apps on the desktop are actually Docker containers. It's really, really cool. You don't have to install things in command line or anything. Casa OS takes care of all of that for you. Now, I'm not saying that you can't use command line. Of course, you can still do that. And I'll show you in just a second how easy easy it is to use the console, not only for Casa, but for every Docker container that you're running. All right, so uh, let's start off by firing up the App Store. Yeah, Casa OS has an App Store, and it makes it extremely convenient to install a ton of incredibly useful apps and take full advantage of the Zima board. Here, you'll see that there are over 400 apps that you can install, ranging from cloud storage to media servers, Home Assistant, Pi Hole, and more. You can even run Doom, which I'll show you later. So you may notice that there are some duplicate apps. Let's say we search for Jellyfin. Uh, there we go you'll notice that there's a few duplicates in here. Well, that's because the App Store actually allows you to install third-party app libraries, which adds even more functionality than you get from the already well-featured App Store. If we go ahead and click on the More tab down here, it actually opens up a whole bunch of awesome store lists, they call them. So yeah, you can add, all you gotta do is actually copy and paste, whoops. Well, I can just click that one. There we go, copy and paste that 
right here and it'll add it. I've already done this, so I don't need to do this again. It's literally that easy to add third party apps to Casa OS. Now, keep in mind that some of the apps on the third party app stores don't run natively in Casa OS. So that brings me to the first app I want to show off. Introducing Chasm. Now, Chasm is a very intuitive app that runs all sort of apps straight through your browser. Chasm was beginner friendly enough for me to get things up and running, but has a ton of functionality for the power users out there. It's even got its own workspace registry. Then you can install a plethora of different apps or even virtual machines. I can give a scroll down here. and You can just see so many different apps they have on here. It's very cool. So let's hop over onto workspaces and see what I've got going. So here are a bunch of super useful apps that I've been using with Chasm. What's also nice is that I installed Tailscale to the Zima board, so I can actually VPN into this machine from anywhere that I also have Tailscale installed. It makes it incredibly useful. That means I can log into the server, fire up something like Bamboo Studio, and start a print from anywhere just using a browser. So let's spin up, let's say Kali VM. Let's do some Kali Linux, start a new tab with a new session. After these messages, we'll be right back. Yeah, it only takes a few seconds to get it going. And now I've got Kali Linux on a VM running through my browser. It couldn't be easier. And now I've got Kali running and it can do my evil hacker bidding. And yeah, it's fully featured. It does everything that Kali normally does. It's got all the same apps, all the same everything. And actually it runs pretty darn well. There's a little bit of a lag, but, but not bad for the fact that it's running on my Ziba board and I can access this from anywhere in the world. So let's hop out of Kali and check out something else. Leave, get over here. And you'll notice right now, I can resume that machine if I want to. I can also stop it or delete it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this session. Goodbye because next I want to run Doom. Here we are. Here is Doom. Start the session in a new tab. Just a few seconds later, look at that. We've got Doom. Let's go to new game. Let's see if we can actually run this. Whoop. Oh yeah, that's right. It was doing some wacky stuff the other day. I was trying to play it. Here's where are my arrow keys. There we go. If I use the mouse on it, my mouse does wacky things with the keyboard. Is it supposed to be played? Yeah, we've got ourselves Doom. Not today. Oh, yep, I guess today. All right, so let's hop back over to Casa OS and check out some other cool stuff. All right, so one app that I consider an absolute must have if you're running a server like this is Pihole. Now, Pihole is your own personal, virtually ad free DNS server. You set up your Ethernet or Wi Fi adapter to use the IP address of the Zima board, and now Pihole filters out all the unwanted ads from websites. It works super great, and even if you run into a pesky website that doesn't work with the ad filtering, you can always turn it off and have it turn back on after a preset amount of time. It makes it incredibly easy to use. One of the things it does not filter is YouTube ads, so you'll have to just go ahead and watch the ads on YouTube as God intended. YouTube, please don't delete this video. Pihole comes with a pre configured, constantly updated filter list, and you can both add domains to a whitelist or a blacklist if you want to make sure that nothing gets filtered from a specific website. Super cool. So I mentioned earlier that it was extremely convenient and easy to access the terminal in Casa OS. So for all of you console commanders out there, you can have your cake and eat it too. Is that how that phrase goes? Anyway, if we head back over to Casa OS, we can very easily access the main OS terminal right up here. Just log in. And then boom, we're right in a terminal. But what if you want to grab a terminal for one of the containers that we're running? Well, if we close this, click on the little hamburger menu over here, go to settings, and then click up here. Now we're in the root for pie hole. It's that simple. LS, and you can see we're already inside of that container. Now this is already a root terminal for the container, and you can click clack that keyboard to your heart's content. Now, as far as a NAS goes, I've got the Zima board set up with kind of the most basic style of media sharing. So let's close out of here and take a look. So if we just open up files, all I had to do after I installed the hard drive to the Zima board was click the little plus button right there, and then go to new local storage. And then right there, it pops right up there. You can either format it or mount it as I did, which was super easy. Now, if we open up video storage down here, go up one folder by clicking MNT. You can click over here, click the three little buttons and go to sharing. It'll say sharing down there. Once I did that, all I had to do is pin that to my quick access bar and bam, quick and easy. I can access all of my media just like that. So yeah, if you're looking for a super capable, inexpensive and hackable mini server, I definitely check out the Zima board series of single board servers. Now, another really useful app that they have on Casa is Home Assistant. Now, Home Assistant is a really good home automation setup. 
it will actually talk to pretty much all of your automation stuff that it can see. So right now I've actually got it hooked up with WLED. So this controls all of the WLED NeoPixels that are inside of my printer. Now it also has control of my family room Sonos speaker and I can hook it up for pretty much anything. This is really a must have if you've got a bunch of home automation stuff. And then one last fun thing that we have on here is actually Jellyfin. Now Jellyfin, if you're not familiar with it, is a media sharing setup. So basically, I've got TV, I've got movies, I've got all this stuff. It's all backed up on my NAS. And yeah, I can just go ahead and watch pretty much anything directly through a browser. And also keep in mind, this isn't only something that I can access from my own network. I can actually access it from anywhere, especially if I'm using a VPN like Tailscale. So yeah, if you're looking for a super capable, small, inexpensive mini server, then check out the Zima Board series of servers. I've been having an absolute blast messing around with mine. And honestly, it's gotten me at least a little bit more comfortable working with Docker images. Plus, it's cool, it's small form factor and low power consumption make it so it barely makes a dent in my power bill. Unlike what would happen if I plugged in that big old boy back there and just ran that as a server. That would use a ton of power and be extremely wasteful. So thank you so much for watching and deciding to pick my video to watch over every other video on the internet. I appreciate you guys so much. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll catch you next time.